WCA. Ocala. Here to share it with us. Share, share the plan. <laughs> Caroline Baldwin is here. You're in the garden with Caroline right now. So welcome to the garden. Caroline is here to answer your gardening and lawn related questions and anything associated with those topics. And of course, uh, the phone number is 622-9622. We do this show, show for a full hour every Tuesday. And uh, we thank the folks over at Black Cow for uh, sponsoring Caroline's yeah. program. Good morning, Caroline. Good morning, Larry. How are you this morning? Pretty good. I was yeah. getting worried about you. You were yeah, running late, huh? I was running, running late. Got caught by a school bus. Mm. And, yeah, Busy getting, time of year? For, it's for well, right now because because spring festival is this weekend oh. and so this morning don't like to do too much in the garden of putting anything spring vegetable like in until right before and of course this is about the was about the only morning i had before the festival just because of work schedule so i had about an hour and a half to try to Actually, with the dark, with the time change, right, I had, right, right, I had right. about an hour approximately right. that I could that I could actually see and, and so do stuff. So for you, you don't like this time I, of year, this time change. I mean, not not initially. I mean, yeah. I love the longer days. So yeah, at least yeah. when I come home from work, it's still sunny out. Right, right, right. And I can I can kick back, relax, enjoy that. But in the mornings, uh, it's a little harder to get going because it's still dark at. Seven o'clock in the I know. morning, yeah, and yeah. Eh, that'll change soon. Now, yeah. You know, each day it's going to get a little longer, so it'll be all right. But it is kind of hard to get that. So I got in a hurry, you know, trying to get all that stuff done. Then I got to clean up all my mess and head over here, and then I got cut by a school bus. <laughs> Uh, sitting there, and it's as like a high school. Okay. It's like a high school school bus. Those kids don't jump on and and go find a seat. No, high school. They sort of. There's a whole lot of kids there, and they take their sweet time to get on yeah, that bus. Yeah, yeah. And they go, yeah, come on, get on the bus and go to school. Where you <laughs> but no, it's it's a good day to be out in the garden. It's gorgeous out there. It's supposed to be, I guess, the warmest day so far this year or since last fall or something. Is that right? I didn't that, hear that. Yeah, Is that right? That. Um, so, you know, do take the precautions. It is sunny out. Wear your sunscreen. Stay hydrated. Uh, um, you know, that, those are the, you know, it's a, it's a mantra because I work outside all the time. As, as you never know, even in the wintertime, you can get dehydrated. Even when it's cool out. That's probably the worst time is because you're not perspiring that you don't realize that you are using up the the fluids in your body and that you do need That's to true. still replace them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just have a tendency, you know, to have that cup of coffee when we come in. Well, you need the bottle of water somewhere in between, too. So uh, just, you know, be careful. We've all been in that, you know, unless you've been out in the garden working here and there for the last few weeks, uh, be careful on your back. You know, you, you know we, we have a tendency to get a little sedentary over the winter time, so we're getting back out in the garden. Yeah, right, blooming. right, right. And you know, the Indian hawthorn out here is blooming. The red buds have been blooming. Dogwoods are blooming. It gets you itching to get out there, and you're bending over to cut right, the things right, back, right, right, right. and you're reaching up, and you're lifting way more than you did for the last three months. So don't, you know, don't overdo it, um, you know. Take it, take it easy. We still got plenty of time in the springtime to to get all those outdoor chores done. Um, and this coming weekend is a good time to actually take part of that weekend and go uh, explore some new plants at the Master Gardener Spring Festival. Uh, learn a few new things possibly by taking in a seminar or two over the weekend. There's, um, oh gosh, I don't know how many are actually going on, but there's. Uh, 
two, four, six, eight. Looks like about twelve going on within the uh, in in the garden talks and demonstrations. And then what do we got? Three, six, nine, nine or ten more that are going to be inside the air conditioning in the auditorium, and also a children's uh, gardening so- zone to get the kids sort of interested, mm. so that it's not completely you know. Oh, we don't want to go there. There's nothing for kids to do. Well, there is. We've got a whole kids mm-hmm. zone uh, that has actually expanded over the last few years. So it's a good step. Yeah. By the way, this past Saturday was the Strawberry Festival. Right. How did that go? It was fun. It was right. just lots of stuff right. to see. But I wanted to tell you one thing. Yeah. There's a lot of people buy those 10 foot by 10 foot booths. Right. I guess right. that's part of the raising yeah, that's money their, thing. Right. One of the booths was filled with plants. Okay. And and I, I said to Robin, isn't it beautiful? I mean, the plants really right. make it. I think every booth should have plants, even if they're not selling plants. Right, right. But just to, just just to kind to, of make it, it look nice. Right. It just sort it of really adds did. an accent. Yeah, right. yeah. Now, was there plants or was there just all strawberry plants? Oh, the, 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 no, oh, not strawberry plants. plants. Oh, just just like, plants. yeah, like house plants. Oh, okay. Yeah, some, nice. some, yeah. I don't know if she has a nursery or what right. she has. Well, but it must have been, yeah. She, was just, she bought the, the 10 by 10 space mm-hmm. for the day, and she was selling plants. I guess it's nice. It's kind of what they were doing. People right. were selling craft and other things. Okay, yeah. other craft items. Nice, nice. Yeah, I was, I was working, so I, I miss a lot of stuff at this time of year, unfortunately. And I didn't get a picture of that. I, well, maybe I did, actually, I somewhere. You just have to hunt through your phone. Um, but you yeah, get the yeah. idea. They all, oh, the, sure. The point yeah. was that the plants really... The plants, the plants do add an accent. I mean, we, you, we bring them in the house. So much of the time here in Florida, we, we don't think of our indoor spaces as plant places. Because we have but so they make much it look of them so nice. outside, right? And they they actually make it feel a little cooler. Um, sometimes you can actually, if you have a screened in or a, a glassed in porch, you can bring in some of those more sensitive tropicals and be able to enjoy those. You know where they might be uh, damaged if you tried to plant them out in the landscape, or ones that you'd be dragging in and out of the house all winter long, kind of thing. You can do up a garden inside. Um, those great big planters make wonderful places to put things uh, inside. There's a lot of different plants that that not just uh, are nice plants inside, but they actually thrive in our indoor growing conditions. And the whole time they're growing, they're actually they're filtering air. Plants are filters for our our air around us. And and I mean, if you ever walk into a um, say one of the state parks, lots of trees, or just into an area, into the woods somewhere on a on a morning after a rain, you just smell that air and it always smells yeah, clean. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's filtered. It's, yeah. And right now my orange tree's doing that with the, with the orange oh, blossoms. The, the orange blossoms, you step out now. If there's any citrus in your neighborhood or you have them, just stop, take that deep breath, and it's just, it's to me, it's one of the best scents you have. Um, around the lake, around Lake Weir, there's, you know, they're all coming into bloom, so... You know, enjoy those, but bringing your plants in the house, you know, or having plants in your home is a wonderful thing. You know, you can have a windowsill garden. Uh, people hang um, ivies and things like that right, in bathrooms right, right. and in kitchens, and all of these things they do. They they bring a, a sometimes a bit a little bit of sense of a calm to a room, as yeah, well yeah. as uh, just sometimes some color, some texture. Uh, just a, it's just a nice feeling to bring plants in the house. So I gave you a story about right. a singing plant. And right. It, it doesn't really literally sing. They, they hook some wires up to it and some devices. And, and, and could bring off some type of sound wave is right. what I was getting from it. But the plant is called a prayer plant. What is that? What is a prayer it's, plant? A prayer plant is one that actually the leaves will open and open and close. Oh, like yeah, praying that, hands. Yeah, like okay. a praying okay. hands. Um I, I've seen some interesting things on plants. If, you know, they got to watch out. You get people going on that, and they, you know, on on that plants can have feelings and things like that, and then people won't eat them either. Uh, <laughs> then you die. Then yeah, if you're, you're a veg- eat- if you're a vegetarian, <laughs> and finally you find out that you're going to cause your plant harm, you oh, may have no, a problem. Oh no! Oh um, <laughs> But um, well, the only thing you could really eat then, uh, and I know vegetarians, vegans don't like yeah. milk and eggs. Right. But you don't kill the animal by eating the eggs or drinking the right. milk or right. the cheese. Right. So it's a process. Right. I know it's a different, yeah, you know, whole different thing. But no, there's some interesting things on plants. I I saw one one time, it, and it was um, on. Um, 
No, I'm going to lose TV? my word. Yeah, it was, on, it was on TV. It was on PBS. Well, I'm trying to get... Can, can we yeah, take a break? Can you break think about it? Okay. Word. Word is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be partly sunny today, very warm and more humid. There may be a shower in spots along the coast this afternoon and evening. The high 81 at the coast, 87 inland. Partly cloudy overnight, though 64 to 68. But tomorrow, some sunshine with a shower or two, especially during the afternoon hours over the interior. The high 81 to 85. And for Thursday, clouds and some sun with a stray shower, high 80 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. You're listening to The Source, your home for Fox News and Fox Sports Weekends. This weather brought to you by a and Lock Dog. Did you know that most break-ins happen during bad weather because it masks the sound? Don't be another victim. Protect your home and business today. Call a and Lock Dog, 352-867-1965. That's 352-867-1965. Black cow. We often mention enriching your native soil with black cow when you prepare a flower bed or vegetable garden or plant new shrubs and trees. Adding black cow helps retain moisture and adds millions of healthy microbes to your soil. Healthy soil means healthy plants, but you can also top dress with black cow composted cow manure even after planting. You can come back a month or two later and spread black cow on top of the soil around the root zone of a shrub or tree, or spread it evenly over a flower bed or rows of vegetables in your garden. Black cow releases nutrients slowly. It won't burn tender roots because it's fully composted. Look for the bright yellow and black bag at your favorite nursery or garden center. And visit the website, too, at blackcow, spelled with a K, dot com. Black cow, the mature manure, black cow. Hi, this is Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin, the host of In the Garden with Carol Ann. Let me tell you what I used to get away from fertilizing the old-fashioned way. I used dynamite premium plant food for my flowers and veggies. With its easy, earth-friendly, patented coating, there's no risk of over-fertilizing. Dynamite Premium Plant Food releases food for six months, so there are no highs or lows during the growing season. Dynamite Premium Plant Food contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and micronutrients like copper, magnesium, iron, and zinc. This gives my plants explosions of bloom for both flowers and veggies. When I use Dynamite Premium Plant Food, I only have to use it once every six months and not worry about the nutrients washing out with heavy rains or irrigation. To learn more about the Dynamite family of products, go to dynamiteplantfood.com. Dynamite premium plant food is so easy to use that you'll spend less time working in your garden and more time enjoying it. WOCA AM 1370. 96.3. 96.3. All right, 18 minutes after 9 o'clock, Caroline Baldwin is here. Your phone calls are important to us, so if you have a question for Caroline, go ahead and call. The number is 622-9622, and uh, this program is brought to you today by Black Cow, and uh, that is the Mature Manure, and by di- Dynamite. And Dynamite, which is premium a plant food. Plant which, food, Plant yeah. food, which is an extended-release plant food. And and the both products are made in. Uh, this they're they're both they're both a flor- out of a here. Florida company. Okay. Yep. Are they in okay. Wildwood or some um, near there? Black House in in Oxford. Oh Oxford. So okay. right right there, okay. right near there. Dynamite made by the same people. Um, they're within the same company. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. I think just okay. a different branch. All right. That, yeah, yeah, you know how companies are. But no, uh, before the break, we were talking about you know the plants. Plants don't have mouths, but they can sing. Uh, where they're picking up vibration, and I guess you you can set that to any sound wave. I'm yeah. sure that you wanted yeah. to any any scene. But there's electrical impulses in the, a, in right the, in right. in plants. Sure, um, but I was uh, started to say, and I couldn't couldn't come up with my word parasitic plants of one I had seen on, uh, and it was on PBS of um watching i believe it was a daughter weed and or daughter vine which is quite an invasive vine and how it finds its host Uh and it was amazing to watch this little uh spindly little uh seedling i guess you'd say sit there and spin until it found and it grew and would swing and and pivot wow. until it found and reached that host and latched on not amazing and it was and it would and normally it would go to cuz it apparently very uh it likes the tomato plant quite a lot and it would go right to that to you know to the tomato plant 
more than something else that was near it. So there is, I mean, it's a higher being. Intelligence, had, right? Had to, yeah, even though there's no brain. That is amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. All right, you have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question about putting plants in the ground. When you dig your hole twice as big and you fill it with the soil, mm -hmm. would it be uh, using the miracle Grow potting soil, uh, garden soil, and black cow? If you mixed a third of each, would that be good? Or It just seems like the, the potting soil is a better compound than that garden soil. No, not for in the ground, it's not. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, in the ground, potting, your potting mix is for pots because it drains well. Um, it should be something that's not going to compact, but some of them will, if depending on which ones you buy. But um, leave the potting soil for the flower pots. And if you're going in the ground, just using the garden mix or the black cow, black velvet, whatever your favorite could be, um, if you're doing if you're doing like say vegetables or herbs and you're doing a small pot i even with that i prefer dumping a couple buckets full right on the ground and as i'm working with it it's working itself in the ground versus digging a hole and putting some in if it's a shrub or any other plant within if it's an annual within weeks those roots are no longer in that hole if it was done right they have spread past that nutrition um, in a shrub bed or something like that or perennials when it within a few months those roots are no longer in that area so that little bit of uh, amendment that you did there I would amend the whole bed versus trying to amend a hole okay sounds good thank you very much you're welcome Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, that's when I do something like that, I, I'll get the bag, and I recommend it to anybody. You don't you don't have to spade it all in. You don't have to turn the soil all over. You're going to plant two or three shrubs in this area. Get you a bag or two of you know the garden mix, black cow. Just bust the bag open right in there, and, and you know mush it around a little bit. Huh. Take your rake, move it so that it's evenly distributed there. But as you work in there, pl digging the hole to put the plant and then filling it back in, you're working that down in there. And the nutrition that's in those will perk down into the soil. Makes because sense. Yeah, because Makes black sense, cow yeah. can be used as a top dress. You can take and run black cow through your, your lawn spreader on your lawn and, and put smell? it out there. No, there's no scent, no odor to it at all. Um, and you can use that as a top dress on your lawn. A lot of people who do, you know, don't don't want to put chemicals on their lawns will use a manure base, and it will perk through. Have you, you don't have. Have to you ever that. read a study, or do you know anything about this? Do vegetables uh, have more nutrients if the ground they're growing in is more fertilized? If the ground they're grown in is good and healthy, they're going to grow better, and so they should actually. They they may. I don't know if there's, it, it's probably slightly measurable, hmm. but, but if you have a soil that's barren or used up, the plant's just not going then to do well grow. anyway. Wow. Your, your, your yield most definitely will be better from a good, healthy soil. Um, you can put all the fertilizer you want in a, in a barren ground, and the, generally the plant's still not necessarily going to take it up and really? thrive no, why? because why? because the, the just the soil doesn't hold it it doesn't keep oh, it really? so you amending the soil is something especially here we have very sandy soil naturally um i think they call it a sand, sandy loam is what they you know but the more you add the more compost you add the more water ca holding capabilities you're putting in the more nutritional holding capabilities you're putting in um, your compost that you're adding in is more than likely lowering your ph somewhat or holding at it at a stable ph level that you're not getting fluctuation most plants if this if the ph is not uh, within a correct range and that's usually to the slightly acidic side, which is a little bit below a seven. So like a six, six to a 6.5 is generally ideal for most plants and most vegetable gardens as well. Um, that, that makes all of the other nutrition that's added available to the plant. Right. If you start to get too alkaline up above a seven, certain nutrients are just not available to the plant. The plant can't take it up.
if it gets too acidic, unless it's blueberries or azaleas or things like that, the, again, the plant can't take it up. Oh, so wow, you wow. get too high of too much of a fluctuation in there, um, and things aren't just the nutrition's not available to the plant. I didn't know that. Yeah, and the more the the beneficial you when you put compost and manures and things like that into the ground, you're also bringing in beneficial microbes that help to uh, to help to feed the plant. Plus, it does help to fight some of the insect issues that are around because the richer the soil, the fewer the nematodes that you're going to have because they, you know, that just the microbes that are in there help to fight those did you, off. Did you happen to see this story about, uh, I think it was at the University of Florida, they, was, they were um, experimenting with penicillin to rid the orange trees of the... Gr- of the greening. Greening? Yes, I, I did see something on that, and I also read that there was, um, I haven't, I don't think I read the whole article, I think I glanced through it. The only drawback that they're looking at is those who would have a penicillin intolerance they're having to. It would know, be in. Oh, it would be it, in the fruit then. It could, yeah, it would oh, possibly wow. carry through. But that's again, they're Where just looking at. Where do you put it? At, you have to inject they it. They would be injecting it into the tree. Into itself. the actual tree. Wow. Yeah. There's other um, tree, you know, plant issues that at times they do inject the uh, the curative item, whether or not it's a fungicide or, a, or some type of thing like that, into a, into a plant. But that's generally not something we're eating. And mm. so this is just something that, you know, it's one of the things they're looking at. They were trying, I think we did talked about the steam. But they said it uh, worked very successfully. It, it, it did But seem that to problem of, is, of the penicillin being right, in the fruit. Right, right. Yeah. And so it's something that they'll have to look at what can, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're looking at so many different things to try to find the one that's going to work the best all the way around, you know, in a long run as well as, you know, the short term as well as the long term. And, and I guess, the, the re- according to the report, the, the uh, impact on the citrus industry is huge. Oh, it's massive because it's not just Florida anymore. And if it, this came in from Asia. It's something, the psyllid came in through Asia. Um, it's a little tiny bug, huh? It's a little tiny, little tiny bug called an Asian citrus psyllid. Psyllid spelled P-S-Y-L-L-I-D. Um Little, little, I've seen them. They, they are tiny. It's easy to miss them. Um, and they vector it. And it's not just in Florida. It has traveled across. I believe it's in California as well oh, now. Yeah. So it's all across our whole citrus in the United States. And so, and and I believe also getting down into South America as well. So it's something that needs to be found and you know find out how to cure it and you know get rid of it. By the way, I learned something yesterday. It's not exactly related to what you're talking right. about but the word sand mm-hmm. in latin is harinum it starts with an h and okay. ends with an m and the word arena is in there is in the center. so it's a-r-e-n-a like arena right which is where we get the word arena from because in the Colosseum in rome they used to cover the floor with sand because when there was blood oh it, it was went. easier to just scoop up the sand, sand and, it, right yeah isn't that there crazy that's, that's where we get the word arena, arena from from Arena is actually sand. sand. Yeah. There you go. Interesting. Just you were nice mentioning sand. Tri- and right. I, nice I just, little piece of trivia. Though. I just happened to stumble on Well, memory. the reason I stumbled on it because there was a story about some Americans who got in trouble, got arrested, I think, mm-hmm. for, for sc- scratching their names into the, col- oh, into yes, the Coliseum. Yes. And you have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. Morning. I, I called in before. I have another question. Sure. Can I do that? Sure. Sure can. Uh, I have nine 55 gallon <clears throat> plastic bags filled with the little small oak leaves. Okay. And I haven't tied it. What's the best way to compost them? Can I put something in with the leaves to break them down a little bit or just, just leave them? You, you can. Uh, they're ones you just recently got all raked up in that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, last week. Okay. Um, you. The best thing to do would be to, if you could, would be if you could break them down a little further by taking your, you know, um, running them over with a lawnmower without the bag, obviously, um, or that kind of thing to make them a little bit smaller because oak leaves do take a long time to break down. But if you can put in um, 
some soil from the garden, a few shovelfuls. You're going to put some water in there uh, a little bit just to keep make it moist. Tie it up, put it in the sun, and you're going to turn it daily. And I hear we're coming up on a break, and so I'll talk about composting in, in the bags when we come back. How's that sound? Okay, excellent. You can hang on right. if, you, if you want to, but we'll be right back. Thank you. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton expected to speak publicly about her email controversy. Even former White House counsel and longtime Clinton defender Lanny Davis thinks she needs to explain why she chose to use a private email account. I wish that Hillary Clinton at some point will address it. Sources say she'll likely address the issue at a New York media event. Meanwhile, the White House admits the president exchanged emails with Clinton but was not aware of how the email and server had been set up. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. Our ambassador to South Korea out of the hospital after an attack expected to make a full recovery. Feels pretty darn good, um, all things considered. American Ambassador Mark Lippert got out five days after he was knifed by a man who said he wants North and South Korea reunified. Fox Radio's Ron Flatter and the Texas judge who blocked the president's action on immigration ordering the Justice Department to answer allegations. The government misled him about part of the plan. Fox News, we report, you decide. Superstorms, road closures, flooding, airport snowed in. If you travel for work like I do, news like that can ruin your whole day. It did mine until I discovered Citrix GoToMeeting online meeting software. With GoToMeeting, you can meet from anywhere using your computer, tablet, or smartphone. No expensive travel required. And with HD video, you simply turn on your webcam and it's just like being in the same room, which means you can stay productive no matter what the news brings. Visit GoToMeeting.com and start our free 30-day trial. What's the secret to great business trips? Choice Hotels, where you'll find everything a business traveler needs, like a generous rewards program. And right now, choose Choice twice for two separate trips and get a night at no price. Stay for business at Choice Hotels and book now at choicehotels.com. Great endings begin here. Free night based on an 8,000-point Choice Privileges Reward Night at over 1,500 hotels. Valid 219.15 through 422.15. Requires registration and two separate qualifying stays. Other terms and conditions apply. Details at choicehotels.com. Black Cow Composted Cow Manure is a terrific organic soil amendment. We start with cow manure from dairy farms and then compost it a full 90 days. The result is an all-natural, dark, rich soil amendment that's great for everything you grow. Flowers, vegetables, shrubs, trees, and lawns, too. Look for Black Cow in the bright yellow and black bag at your favorite nursery or garden center. Black Cow, the mature manure, Black Cow. Are you still fertilizing flowers and vegetables the old-fashioned way? Then switch to Dynamite Premium Plant Food. The secret to more flowers, bigger blooms, and more vegetables is consistent feeding. Dynamite Premium Plant Food is formulated for our Florida climate and has a unique coating that releases nutrition consistently. So there are no peaks and no valleys. Dynamite is just a terrific product. It even contains the micronutrients plants need in small quantities for maximum growth. With Dynamite, you get an explosion of color, flowers, and vegetables. Dynamite comes in a handy shake and feed plastic bottle. Just one application will last up to six months. For more flowers, bigger blooms, and more vegetables, try Dynamite Premium Plant Food today. Look for Dynamite at your Home Depot or Lowe's Garden Department. Visit on the web at dynamiteplantfood.com. Time now to spiff up your bling for spring. Make your rings look brand new. Our master jeweler at Goss & Son will rhodium finish your rings for just $69.95, regular price $75. It's like waxing your car. It brings that shine back and looks all brand new all over again. So come see us, our downtown location, Goss & Son Jewelers, serving you downtown for 65 years. Right on the southwestern corner of the square sits one of the finest dining establishments in Florida, Mark's Prime Steakhouse and Seafood Restaurant. Mark's offers big city dining amenities in a charming and small town setting. It's a rare treat to experience both the ambiance and the exquisite cuisine in a friendly atmosphere. Ocala's finest restaurant serves the finest beef, the freshest seafood, premium wines, and naturally fresh vegetables. From valet parking to splendid service, Mark's offers the complete package. Check it out today. Mark's Prime Seafood and Steakhouse Restaurant. 
Hey, Matt. I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. All right. 25 minutes before 10 o'clock, Carol Ann Baldwin is in the studio. If you have a question, go ahead and call 622-9622. And I know that we had to interrupt the answer you were given to your last caller. Right, so. right. Yeah, and the last caller had uh, was questioning, had several bags, great big 55-gallon black trash bags full of the oak leaves, which are filling up everybody's yard right now. And he wanted to compost them. And with anything, when you're talking about your yard waste and things like that, those oak leaves, that's a lot of your brown. That's a lot of your carbon and um in order for them to really break down the best thing if you can do it is to make them smaller if you can cut them up with the lawn mower with a with a weed whacker or you get one of them uh, the leaf blower vax that'll actually chop them up before they go into a collection <laughs> right, bag right, right. um that's going to make it go a lot faster than than anything would uh, to these bags that he does have, if he's not doesn't have the ability to break them down a little bit by themselves, uh, again they will take some take a little longer. You can put some garden soil in there, um, or even just buy you go buy a bag of say the garden mix. Uh, doesn't have to be an expensive, does not have to be a name brand, uh, or the black cow, anything like that, that you're going to be actually putting a little bit of a fertilizer in there to, to get it starting to cook off. And you're also going to put some water in there at any given time, and then you can go line them up against a fence. If you can put them where they get some sun, that's great. Plastic bags do decompose. They, they will break down on you out in the sun. Um, you're going to want to turn them. I would say probably every couple of days, give them a turn. Once a week, you might open it up and check and make sure that it's still moist. You want your compost to sort of feel like a wrung out sponge at any at any one time. You can add some kitchen scraps to those as you're going. If you have some right now, or if you've been collecting any, uh, you might even collect up, you know, I don't know how many bags, he, I forget how many bags he said he had, but say every, every couple of days, whatever kitchen scraps you had, throw them in one bag. Then the next time, throw them in the next bag. And that's gonna help to put some of those enzymes and those uh, uh, other bi uh, biological things in back into there that'll help them break down but again tie it back up turn them every few days check the water and um, it might because the leaves aren't broken down it might take a few months for them to to break down and caroline you have another phone call good morning you're on the air with caroline yes good morning caroline good morning see uh would it be bad to put mushrooms in a in a, in a bag like that compost um the the ones like that you that maybe went bad in the fridge you mean no 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 the ones in your lawn no i would probably dispose of them in the regular gra garbage okay because that might it's kind of like a poison probably huh well it would the spores may just continue to reproduce themselves in there and once you spread your compost out you would be then reintroducing those back in yeah okay the reason i, I call the with the mushrooms is that uh, we had a, a nice wet winter, mm -hmm. and uh, up to not too long ago, it's, it's kind of drying out a little bit now, but it, it's been a field day for mushrooms, and in my year in particular, I never had a problem before, but I, 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 I just had an unbelievable amount of mushrooms. Now, uh, is, there, is, there, is this telling me that there might be something wrong with my soil that I should pay attention to or something? Not necessarily. Usually it means that there's some type of organic material underneath there that's that's decaying um that you know because that's what normally what what mushrooms and fungi grow on and it could be that if you had um did you have any trees taken down a few years ago well a lot of trees <laughs> and it could be the root zones that could be the root zones of those trees are finally beginning to break down oh okay uh, i had five large oak trees uh 
uh, taken down. They were t- a very a big nuisance for me. Uh, sure. Uh, they were mass messy, and then I couldn't grow grass under them. Right, and right. And it, it was just <clears throat> terrible. You know, I, I really don't like oak trees. Right. The only thing you can really do is when you see you go out in the morning, you, when you see those mushrooms popping up, is go and just gather them up as soon as you see them. Don't give them a chance for those to open up and re- redistribute spore. That's your that's well, your you know, best way to get rid of them. Maybe what I've been doing is not good because I, I take one of my golf clubs up there, and, out have, there and I practice my swing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just sort of shooting any spore that might have that might have been there oh, all well. over the place. Yeah, but yeah. that yeah the best way the best way would be to just try to gather them up and and get rid of them and. You, I mean, you might want to have a soil pH test done, but I don't think that's really anything that's, uh, if your grass is doing well otherwise and has been, that's not an yeah. issue. Uh, would a lawn service be able to treat that with some kind of a chemical? No, nope. no, there's nothing you can do for the those kind of uh, those kind of mushrooms. You know, it's not a fungus like a lawn fungus that actually is the grass blades or the root yeah. zone. It is. It's a different, whole different structural body. Um, yeah. Only thing I was thinking of is is possibly be careful on how much nitrogen fertilizer you're putting down, because um, okay. it it could possibly be being affected by that. That that kind oh. of you know, because as we mow our grass, we're putting nitrogen back in just because of the grass clippings, uh, and then right. we add a nitrogen fertilizer later on in the season, and so we're putting more down. So it might be uh, watching and making sure that whatever nitrogen source you're putting down, uh, your grass clippings, you don't have to worry about. They're they're a slow release nitrogen, but your other nitrogen sources and your other fertilizer are are have as much slow release as you can get. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, we're going to kind of be in the dry pattern now until we get our summer rains. You know, right. So I would say, like in the next couple of months. Uh, You'll pro- that, that problem will probably uh, be eliminated. Although I, I do have a sprinkling system, so I go out there once or I guess you can do it twice a week now. Right. And I want to I want to start watering because it, it it's starting to get a little bit dry already. Right, right, and 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 it will go down. And especially when you're putting the water down, it is a little more controlled because you're going to put it down in the morning. The grass will have a chance to dry uh, all day long. The the blades and the top surface of the soil will dry, and that that's not. Um, conducive to grow for those mushrooms to come out even though we are still a little moist we have the fog in the morning and things like that so we have a high humidity um the problem may kick itself back up in about august or september again when we have the heat and the rains and then a lot of times we'll see another batch of mushrooms start to come up out of the out of the ground and sometimes it's fairy ring sometimes it's just but it's not a whole lot you can do about in your lawn except getting out there and and plucking those up out of the ground you might take your little hand trowel and see if you can get down in there and and get all of the the little stem out of there and i would i would watch the nitrogen source um on, on what you, on your fertilizers. Take a look at your bags on what you use. In June, don't use a, a nitrogen. Uh, you know, just go with the iron and magnesium things like that, and uh, watch it. Watch. Yeah. Go with a slow release on your on the rest of the year. Yeah, but mushrooms are one of my favorite foods, but I uh, I don't know which ones are safe to eat or not. So I. You know, I, just, I don't fool around with that. <laughs> yeah, I don't fool around with the ones growing in the yard either. I'll I'll buy mine in the at the you know the supermarket or farmers market myself. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of times with, I know, I see we're getting ready a couple minutes before, um, that you know, watching what we do in our lawns, you know, when we can test for, the Ag Center can test for pH, and that's all it's going to be is whether or not your, your, the plant's ability to take that nit- the, the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, everything you put on the ground up into the plant itself. If you want a more in-depth uh sample kind of thing done you would have to send it off to the university and they will do the NPK the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium and give you recommendations on that but that's only you know you're only going to do that if you truly are going to adjust your fertilization uh, on on lawns or your landscape and that one does cost uh, last time I checked it was about seven dollars I would call it extension if you're interested or this weekend there'll be people to ask right, the, right, you right. know that they you know at the Q&A booth they'll probably be able to tell you uh, it may have gone up to nine dollars or something like that I'm not sure I know um, 
now the soil uh, pH test, I believe, has a, a nominal fee uh, now, which is, you know, worth it because you're getting like digital data. Two dollars, I believe. Okay. Yeah, it's it's nominal on that. It's just covering the cost of uh, right, right. the supplies, really. Right, we're so, not, not quite there yet. Not so, quite so, there. So, so the event is, is this Saturday? The event is this Saturday and Sunday, the Master Gardener Spring Festival, and I believe this is the 20... Let's see, I've been there almost 20 years. 23rd... This might be the 23rd annual oh, wow. Master Gardener Spring Festival. All right, we'll take a little break, and uh, your phone calls are welcome. We have 15 minutes left in the show, so after the commercial break, you'll be able to chat with Carol Ann if you call 622-9622. We'll take that break right now, and we'll be right back. This is WOCA Ocala. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be partly sunny today, very warm and more humid. There may be a shower in spots along the coast this afternoon and evening. The high 81 at the coast, 87 inland. Partly cloudy overnight, though 64 to 68. But tomorrow, some sunshine with a shower or two, especially during the afternoon hours over the interior. The high 81 to 285. And for Thursday, clouds and some sun with a stray shower, high 80 to 84. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall -wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Hi, this is Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin, the host of In the Garden with Carol Ann. Let me tell you what I use to get away from fertilizing the old-fashioned way. I use Dynamite Premium Plant Food for my flowers and veggies. With its easy, earth-friendly, patented coating, there's no risk of over-fertilizing. Dynamite Premium Plant Food releases food for six months, so there are no highs or lows during the growing season. Dynamite Premium Plant Food contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium and micronutrients like copper, magnesium, iron, and zinc. This gives my plants explosions of bloom for both flowers and veggies. When I use Dynamite Premium Plant Food, I only have to use it once every six months and not worry about the nutrients washing out with heavy rains or irrigation. To learn more about the Dynamite family of products, go to dynamiteplantfood.com. Dynamite Premium Plant Food is so easy to use that you'll spend less time working in your garden and more time enjoying it. Good credits, bad credits, it's none of our business because we're not an auto dealer. We're not a bank. We're not your mother. We're OcalaForSales.com, Marion County's marketplace for cars, trucks, and SUVs. We've got thousands of sellers standing by to take your call. No middleman. But hurry, don't walk, don't run. Just sit down and log on to OcalaForSales.com. License and inventory change daily. Offer does not include dealer charge. Undercutting rust proofing factory surcharge or delivery fee. See website for details. One of the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking, will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Cozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. All right, 12 minutes before 9 o'clock, let's return to Carol Ann Baldwin in the garden with Carol Ann. And uh, are, you, are, you, so are you really, really busy right now? Because this event is Saturday. This event is Saturday and Sunday. Oh, I'm crazy busy. I know and you're busy, but I mean, does year. that add more to it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, because Saturday I'll be at work in the morning, and then I'll be at the Ag Center in the afternoon because I have a presentation Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. And then Sunday, again, I'll be at work till... Oh, I don't know. Do you know, have a little amplifier or something, or do you have? Yeah, to they, just have a, shout? they have a no. Oh, okay. They have a nice sound system. Actually, they okay. bought a uh, one with actually with dual mics with do uh, that are on different channels. Do you know, one years so, ago we did when, when Suzanne was doing the show, we yeah. did a remote broadcast from Lowe's, and we had a sound system outside. So, nice. in in addition to. The broadcast. It was right. actually this parking lot audience that could right, that could hear. That could hear. Well. We should do that one day. Yeah, we should. Should have to try to figure out how to do that. Well, I guess Lois has to pay. For <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> for the remote. <laughs> for the remote. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, but, it's a great idea. I yeah, mean, it is. It's, it was. It was a wonderful uh, PR thing. Oh yeah. For us and for them. Right. Right. 
It would be a, yeah, it'd be a good spring spring hmm. type thing. But yeah, this time of year for me is crazy busy. Deliveries are up like crazy. Do you and deliver them? No, I don't deliver them. No. But they come in. Yeah, they get they get dropped at the back gate and they come in and have to come out onto the tables. Oh, okay, it delivers that way. Yeah, well, Lowe's doesn't yeah. deliver. No, well, I mean Lowe's will deliver to houses, but they charge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But no, the the no the plants come in from the from the nurseries themselves on on great big trucks and. They get dropped off at each of the different stores, and but it's sort of like they empty one truck for hours. You know, just boom, here, drop it all here. They'll sell it. <laughs> but or it seems like it sometimes. But there's a yeah, there's a lot of plants, a lot of flowers coming through right now, and and everybody's getting all their veggie plants, all their bedding plants. It's a strange time though that some of the some of the perennials are are just now coming in. But if you think about it, if they were in your landscape, you just cut them back. So for the nursery to get them out there, they're trying not to push them in too quick because, you know, you always have to worry about some of those cooler nights. But, I, yeah, we're, we should be, I think we're safe now, especially because the 15th is our last expected frost date. But we're going to keep our fingers crossed. We don't even get anywhere near that between now and you know, next year. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, well, we'll we'll have you know come we're come done. November December next year. Okay, if we get another yeah. frost, I'll be happy. Yeah, be yeah happy. we're done. But you know, just um, yeah, this is that gardening time of year. You're getting out. You got your you know all the different changeovers. Um, I I probably would not begin any more true cool season plants only because it's going to heat up rather quickly whatever you have in your garden should be coming to its maturity soon you're going to be putting in you know all your tomatoes and your peppers and things um, eggplant and peppers are ones that truly need the warmer weather so if you want to wait and and put those in in another few weeks uh, you know they'll be a little happier I like to I like to grow my squash and my cucumbers. I like to start those in pots in the house or you know somewhere safe um, and get some nice size to them before I put them out. I know they have a large seed. It's easy just to put them in the ground, but I just think they get a, a, a better start if I can control their environment a little longer mm-hmm. than when they go in the ground and suddenly here comes all the bugs and here comes all the disease issues. Uh, if you get them a, a little bigger, a little hardier, okay. a little stronger before yeah, you sure. put them in the ground, um, I, I find I get a better yield in the long run. Same way with okra. Okra is a big attractor of nematodes into the garden. So are tomatoes, but okra is worse. Um, don't plant your okra in the same place year after year, or plant it in a block over in one spot to where you can then solarize that later. The only true effective way of getting rid of nematodes is gonna be solarization. But I like to start start the okra um, in trays or in little seed cells uh, in the house. Let them grow up for a while and get them in the ground. You'll at least get a really nice harvest before the nematodes get them and begin to really uh-huh, set uh-huh. them back. Nematodes are microscopic worms that penetrate the root system, preventing the plant from taking up and processing nutrition. And so those are um, not something we want in the garden, but they are attracted to okra in particular, hmm. uh, you know, in the vegetable garden. So it's something, but of course, the more organic material you put into the garden, the fewer the nematodes are. And if we, and I still have not tried it. I don't know if, if our friend Fred is still uh, amongst us that are still planting daisies, uh, put it nicely that way or not, but he always had, and I never have tried it. I keep saying I'm going to. His method for nematodes was an old school, old farmer way of adding table sugar right into right, the right. into the furrow or into the hole when planting that it does something microbiologically that helps to keep nematodes at bay. If anybody tries it with success, let us know. Uh, we can attribute it to our to one of our old friends. That's right. Uh, you know, was a longtime listener, and we just we haven't heard from him in a in a very very long time. Do you know what's what's interesting to just con- compare what you talk about to what other people talk about? And we had the pet experts earlier today, oh. and I asked them about garlic and vinegar in the dog's food. Right. Because garlic supposedly kills fleas. It, or repels if, them. Right. And, and vinegar supposedly gets rid of the uh, the worms in the stool. Okay. Okay. Both of them. They, sa- they said, don't do either one of those things because they'll harm, the, the garlic will harm the, the, uh, 
the dog's, I guess, kidneys, I think they said. Oh, and the, in, in concentrations, and, I guess. And so they didn't, so both, the, yeah, but you hear these little these are little home, home remedies remedy all the time. Thing. Right, right. And the thing I always had against the garlic, I, I actually did that with one dog, and after a while you couldn't pet him because he stomped. Oh, really? Really? You know, it, it comes through because it repels is what it does. And uh, I, I never heard that actually because I know you don't I know you don't give dogs onions. Oh really? You know, onions are toxic to dogs. I didn't know that yeah. either. Wow. But so it could be that over time garlic is the same kind of thing. And chocolate so, obviously. And chocolate obviously right. But uh, but I guess I'm comparing it to what you we just right, saying. That, you, you put yeah. things in your like for example if you had. Well, it, like vinegar is no good right, for a dog, obviously, right. but it, would it work on a plant? Uh, it'll kill a plant. Oh, it'll kill the yeah, plant. Yeah, plants, pl- yeah, plants and vinegar. Vinegar is a uh, a natural herbicide that, it, you know, oh, if I you're doing know that. that. Yeah, people doing trying to go with a more organic uh, method of, of things. Uh, it, it will kill them. It won't necessarily kill the root zone, so you have to keep reapplying or, uh-huh, that, you know, uh-huh. it may come back. And you have a phone call. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Hi, Carol Ann. Good morning. And I'm I'm wishing you both a nice morning and a, and a good spring. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know about my camellia bush okay. that has grown uh, out of control, mm. and it's absolutely loaded with beautiful pink camellias. Okay. Uh, when do I cut it back and how much? You can cut it back after it's done blooming, and uh-huh. I probably would not cut it any more than about one-third. Okay, just, no. just I had tipped the ends like last year. Okay, but it's still looking gangly. You know what I'm saying? Sure, I think I sure. To ever trim it back? Right. Well, how how big is it? About eight feet? It's about uh, six feet tall. About six feet. You can take about two feet off of that. Okay. And and without doing without doing any uh, real damage. Well, you know, it sent up two babies. Okay. And I potted them, and they are just doing well. I was surprised. Super, super. Yeah. You know, I thought once I cut them off the main root uh-huh. um, that they would die, but no. they didn't. They, Great. They lived, and they're doing really well. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, take out any wood that might be dead. You might even make sure that you're taking out any any branches that are crossing over and rubbing one another. Uh, those are ones that you can take out. Uh, in addition to taking off about two feet of the size, so you well, can shorten that. Well, there's a bunch of uh, hybrids of these uh, camellias oh, because yeah. my my double red ones uh, don't grow very tall and don't don't get so bushy like this one did. Right. There's there's exactly. many different there's many different varieties of camellias. Mm. Lots okay. Of. One other thing, I have one of those. Uh, uh, lilies that's the huge big green leaf uh, uh-huh. it's like an Easter lily and it's like a, a burst of white okay um, and you know um, I know that it's the leaves are going to turn brown during the winter but even during the summer they get these round gold spots in them and I was wondering if I'm not putting something on it that it needs no it might be it may be a rust it might be a little bit of a fungal issue going on so you may you may wish to spray if you know if you want to if it's not too bad you what can kind just of spray do you put on it would be a fungicide a fungus. Fungicide, something like a dacanil or a copper. Um, if you well, use. What does copper do? I've often wondered that. Copper's a fungicide. It it stops funguses. Um, and if you, a lot of the fung, a lot of the copper fungicides will actually have on the label. It'll uh, work on like the mosses and things like that in the trees too. I that see. if you've got the ball moss, you mix it per the directions for that. Spray it Is in it through the tree. Separately? The, the, from the other, you know, fungicides, or is it? Um, it, you, it, it, the copper is a little harder to find. Um, I think only because if you overmix it, it can have a uh, toxicity to your plants. So I think it has become a little harder to to find. Um, but you can find, you know, it's a small, usually a small bottle, uh, a white bottle might be a, might be a brown. I'm not sure the different brand names, what color bottles they're using on it. But I have found it a little more difficult um, to locate in the stores. Yeah. 
Okay, one other question, then I'll let somebody else come in. Sure. Um, I bought some spinach plants this year, and okay. I have never had good luck with planting spinach from seed. Okay. I was wondering, uh, do they take any different care than any of the other vegetables? They are a, they're a little more of a cool season uh, crop. That, oh, they are. Okay. Yeah, normally they are. If it's like the Bloomsdale, I think that that one will go a little longer. It's a slower to, what they say, bolt, you know, in the hot weather. Um just have to watch the moisture. I think they do like it a little on the moist side, um, but just you know that kind of that kind of not thing. Not buggy or anything. No, not not too bad. I mean, not not nothing worse than any of your other greens. Well, I'm trying to do the green thing, you know. Right. <laughs> Got collards and sure. broccoli and all that is already, you know, the all that broccoli is all finished and all, but I'm trying to eat more of the greens. There you go. I would try some spinach, but I sure. didn't realize it. even the package didn't say that it was for winter. Right, right. A little, little more cool, and I know we're we're out of time here at the, the top of the hour. Yeah, right up there against the clock. Uh, thank you, listeners, and, and thank you, Caroline. Yep, thanks, This Larry. is WOCA Ocala. Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. The vice president is blasting a group of Republican senators for a letter they sent to the leaders of Iran warning any nuclear deal they cut with the president could expire the day he walks out of office. Joe Biden calling that letter expressly designed to undercut a sitting president in the midst of sensitive international negotiations.